Member statements. The member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday morning, the Financial Accountability Office released their report on the government's cancellation of the cap and trade program, along with most of the climate change action plan, and the numbers are staggering. The FAO announced that these cancellations will result in a hit of $3 billion to the province's bottom line, increasing the annual deficit by nearly $800 million by 21-22. The government's compensation strategy of $5 million excludes 99% of allowances purchased by businesses. If these companies are not compensated, these costs will be passed on to the consumer, and that is not money in the pockets of Ontarians. How much more will be spent on lawsuits? Will Ontario lose the $420 million in federal funding at risk because we do not have a climate change plan? The government intends on spending about $500 million per year on CCAP programs, but this government is picking and choosing which programs will be cut and which are going to be kept. We know the Green On program was cancelled, but which ones are being kept at the expense of the taxpayers in Ontario? How did the government choose which programs are going to be kept and what ridings do they affect? Mr. Speaker, I smell another billion-dollar boondoggle on its way. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Mall. Th Good afternoon, Speaker. Last week, I was fortunate to have the opportunity to attend 40th Canadian Regional Seminar in Aculet, Nunavut. The seminar was attended by both federal and provincial representatives, 36 in total. There were six panel topics covered with many notable moments. <clears throat> on the panel discussion on decorum in the chamber, the clerk from Quebec discussed the Quebec legislature move to ban clapping in the House during question period. A move there is for them to reduce antiques and to be more productive. Our own Deputy Speaker, Rick Nicholson, also presented very well on the topic. On mental health matters, the discussion was heavily participated by all the members. It was interesting to note that there was a consensus among all members for the need to invest in mental health. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud that our Ontario government has already committed to investing $3.8 billion in mental health. I also had the opportunity to represent Ontario in a panel discussion on reflecting and respecting the Indigenous presence in Parliament. I reported that while work has been done in the last decade to increase Indigenous participation and representation, there are still four provinces with zero political representation from the Indigenous community. I believe there's still a lot of work needs to be done. Lastly, I would like to give a shout out to both the clerk offices here at Queen's Park and Nunavut for the execution of a flawless event and I encourage other members to attend. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. Zoe Kiri Matsur spoke today at a rally led by youth concerned about the cancellation of Ontario's climate plan. Zoe is a youth uh, in my riding of University Rosedale. In her rally, she, at the rally, she said, no children were consulted on the cancellation of the plan, and yet our future is severely endangered. Our voices are especially important because it is our future that is threatened. Zoe is 11. In 2040, in 2040 Zoe will be 33. 2040 is the year the UN predicts global climate catastrophe if we don't take urgent action now. We're at a crossroads. We could have a hopeful world where our youth and children can live their best lives, or a grim world with food and water shortages, killer heat waves, coastal cities underwater, and global sacrifice zones too hot to live in. We get to decide our future, us, legislatures, adults living today. The Conservative government is choosing the grim option by cancelling our cap-and-trade plan and wasting $3 billion of Ontario's money just to cater to big polluters. Conservatives choose the hopeful option, the option that gives kids like Zoe a good future, a good life. 
listen to the evidence and say yes to a climate plan that limits warming to 1.5 degrees or below. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Brampton South. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today I would like to take an opportunity to, to mark a very special day, uh, the start of the 2018-2019 Toronto Raptors uh, season. Uh, many, of us, uh, many of us may be divided on what NHL or CFL team we cheer for. Uh, but in Canada, we are all united behind our only NBA team, the Toronto Raptors. Tonight, they kick off their season uh, against the Cleveland Cavaliers, and fans across this country are going to tune in to watch them uh, take on the Cavaliers and, and start their road to the NBA championship. This year, this year is especially exciting after a blockbuster trade saw the Toronto Raptors land one of the best offensive and defensive players in the league, Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> With the addition of Kawhi and a talented roster of young players and uh, Kyle Lowry and Jonas Valanciunas, this team is being noticed across the league. Mr. Speaker, LeBron James is shaking in his boots at the thought <laughs> of playing the Toronto Raptors this year. I urge all members across all party lines in this House to show their support to Canada's team and cheer on the Toronto Raptors this year as we make history. Go Raps, go. Let's Thank go. you. Thank you. Member for Timmins. Well, Mr. Speaker, yet again I heard the Premier this week, and then I heard the Minister saying? of Finance saying, they oh, they, they lowered the price of gas oh, in Ontario. Here they go again. They haven't even taken the four and a half cents off that they promised as a result of the cancellation and cap and trade. We're still paying that tax that they promised they were going to take off. But they're running around the province and they're trying to say, hey, everybody, look at the price of gas is down. There's something called winter blend. Yeah. Every year, gas companies in the fall and in the spring change the blend, price, the change the blend formula of, of gas and affect the price. Price of gas always goes down in the fall, and market conditions push the price up and push the price down accordingly to the whims of whatever's going on in the market. I think that the government's got to come clean. It's got to say that, in fact, at this point, they have done absolutely nothing Zero. to affect the price of gas. New Democrats have put forward a, a bill that's now in committee that would allow us to regulate the price of gas. If the government intends to hold its promise by reducing four and a half cents of gas tax on the price of gas, well, then they're going to have to do something such as pass the NDP bill that provides for regulation. Because I'll tell you what will happen. If they take the four and a half cents off and there's no protection for the consumer by way of regulation or other mechanism, the gas companies are going to take over the room and we're going to be paying right what we used to before and the gas company is going to run away with the profits, laughing every day that they go to the bank. So I say to the government across the way, you should do the right thing. You should support gas price regulation and stop taking credit for something you haven't done yet. Member for Scarborough Gildred. In the House today to congratulate Theatre Scarborough from my riding of Scarborough Guildwood on receiving $19,500 from the Ontario Trillium Fund. The grant has provided Scarborough Village Theatre with a new hearing loop system, making it the first and only community theatre of its kind in Toronto. This investment will enhance the audience's experience by ensuring that they can hear more clearly during performances, particularly people with hearing loss. Theatre Scarborough has produced three has three producing companies that will benefit from the new hearing loop system: Scarborough Players, Scarborough Theatre Guild, and the Scarborough Music Theatre. I had the opportunity to experience the new system at the Scarborough Players' 60th anniversary opening night performance of Noises Off. The production was hilarious, entertaining, and well produced. I'd like to say thank you to Catherine Turner and the Scarborough Players president, Chris Wakeline, for the invitation. I had the opportunity to speak with the producers of Noises Off, Elaine O'Neill, and her lovely daughter, Grace. Congratulations to the Scarborough Players on their 60th anniversary, and thank you for providing a platform for local talent in Scarborough for the last 60 years. Your commitment and your contributions to the arts in my riding is exceptional. It's making our community more livable and more accessible for families to grow old. 
Thank you, Speaker. And I invite everyone to the performance which runs until October 20th. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Member statements. Member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, October 15, was Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day. This campaign started in America in 2002, with Canada joining in 2004. In Ontario, Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Day was officially declared on December 8, 2015, as one of the many elements of Bill 141, Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Research and Care Act. The day is observed with remembrance ceremonies, candle lighting vigils, and concludes with the International Wave of Light. This day is a day of remembrance for all of those who have suffered the loss of a child, whether it is through miscarriage, stillbirth, or SIDS. We acknowledge both the grieving parents as well as the loss of life. While miscarriages are common, occurring in 15 to 20 percent or one in five pregnancies, these statistics do not provide comfort to grieving parents. Stillbirth, though less common, with six stillborn infants in 1,000 total births, are equally devastating. The Pregnancy and Infant Loss Network, or PALE Network, is an organization that families can turn to for support in dealing with pregnancy and infant loss. The number is 1-888-303-7245. I know that this kind of grief is one that you will carry with you forever. I have suffered from four miscarriages, so I understand all too well. To all of those who have had to bear this cross, please know that you are not alone. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements? The member for London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, over the last week in London, two reports were released that have the potential to completely transform my community, London Community Foundation's Vital Signs and the Middlesex London Community Drug and Alcohol Strategy. The two reports provide a powerful call to action and share a vision of a caring, connected and inclusive future where all citizens feel they belong. The call to action comes from statistics that are stark and troubling. More than 70,000 Londoners are living in poverty, including one in four children. Only three in five working-age Londoners are, are working or are looking for work, one of the lowest participation rates in the province. Almost half of all London tenants are spending more than 30 per cent of their monthly income on rent. Almost 6,000 people in London and Middlesex use injection drugs, with the harms of substance use disproportionately experienced by Indigenous peoples, LGBTQ, and people living with mental illness. The shared vision recognizes the importance of addressing social determinants of health and strengthening individual sense of belonging and connection. As Vital Signs points out, belonging is the glue that holds our community together. Speaker, Londoners are committed to achieving this shared vision, but we can't do it alone. Today, I call on the government to join with my community as a full partner, provide us with the resources and policy changes necessary to end poverty tackle inequities and help London to thrive. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A day for seniors began in Simcoe North back in September 2001, and 17 years later, I am proud to say that this special event continues on. Hmm. On October 5th and 12th, I co-hosted my first annual seniors event with the Federal Member of Parliament, Mr. Bruce Stanton. Nice. These events were held in Midland at the North Simcoe Sports and Recreation Centre and in Aurelia at Otis Park. We had an incredible turnout with hundreds in attendance. Organizations from across the riding volunteered their time and hosted informational sessions in order to spread awareness on topics such as accessibility, home health care, nutrition, and physical activity. Our seniors heard from some wonderful guest speakers, such as Carmen Stumpo, the CEO at Aurelia Soldiers Memorial Hospital, mm. Dr. Kevin Young, lead geriatrician at the Seniors Care Clinic, Tom Cheel from the Canadian Anti-Fraud Agency, Tim Anderson from Crawford McLean Law Office, Jeremy Bertrand from the Ministry of Finance, and Melissa Brabant from the Ministry of Transportation. I also had the honour to recognize Cliff Favell as the Aurelia Senior Day. He is a recipient of the United Senior Citizens of Ontario Senior of the Year Award and a dedicated member of my community. Seniors are the foundation of our society. They have accumulated a wealth of knowledge and wisdom through their vast experiences, and they serve as a beacon for younger generations. I feel privileged to acknowledge their contributions, celebrate their achievements, and provide information 
to ensure they receive the support they deserve to lead happy and healthy lives. That's nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much. Members' statements. The member for Willowdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, forgive me if my speaking ability is a little off. It's Small Business Week, and the business I decided to visit was that of Dr. John Rowe, my dentist, so my mouth's a little bit frozen right now. <laughs> this weekend, I had the privilege of helping with a bottle drive organized by the beer store in my uh, riding of Willowdale, and the organize organizers gave me uh, the privilege of allowing to pick the recipients of the proceeds, and I chose Eva Satellite right away. EVA Satellite is a local extension of EVA's initiative, an award-winning organization that provides shelter, transitional housing, and programming to help young people build brighter futures. EVA Satellite in Willowdale is Canada's first harm reduction shelter for youth. They are there to help those struggling with substance abuse and mental health issues, and it is truly an inspiring organization. Like Eva Satellite, uh, that it, the fact that it exists in my writing is, is a true honor. You know, we need to take care of our future generations. And as a young man, I, I, I suffered with depression and anxiety, and it's only uh, thanks to the support of my friends and family that I was able to get through those difficult times. And we need to make sure that our youth that are at risk today have that su same support mechanism so that we can make sure that they are able to have a bright future, maybe sit in this house one day, not to just to change their communities, but indeed to change our entire world. So please get out there and support your local uh, shelter or similar uh, EVA satellite organizations uh, in your community as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. That concludes the time we have for member statements this afternoon. Report